The Sydney Metro Northwest is the first fully automated, longest rail tunnel in Australia with high frequency service, and it's also equipped with advanced safety features. However, it took years of planning and construction to build such a marvel. And in today's video, we're going to show you what it takes to build a project like the Sydney Metro Northwest and how they've done it. The project was once referred to as the Northwest Rail Connection. The name Northwest Rail Link originally applied to only the portion of the line between Epping and Rouse Hill. In June 2015, the name was officially changed to include both the old Northwest Rail Link route and the current Epping to Chaswood rail line. This project was renamed the Sydney Metro Northwest in June 2015. As a part of a fast transit plan, the Sydney Metro Northwest project built a rail line through the city's northwest suburbs in New South Wales, Australia. The route links the suburbs of Rouse Hill and Chaswood via Castle Hill and Epping, and the existing Epping to Chaswood rail connection was upgraded to Metro standards as a part of the project. The project was overseen by Transport for New South Wales and completed by the Sydney Metro Agency on May 26, 2019. The contract for geotechnical drilling was given to Coffee Geotechnics, which was assisted by AECOM in August 2011, and drilling commenced on September 7th of that same year. In order to get ready for building one of the underground stations, the drilling rig was put in park on Castle Hill, which was right next to the Castle Towers shopping center. In order to gain an understanding of the geological profile along the proposed alignment between Epping and Rouse Hill, around 150 boreholes measuring 5.9 inches in diameter were drilled up to 246 feet deep. All of those boreholes had a maximum depth of 75 meters, and as per estimation, the drilling phase was finished in around nine weeks' time. The dirt that was excavated during the tunneling procedure was recycled and spread all around Sydney. The construction of the Northwest Rail Link was accomplished through the execution of three significant contracts. A joint venture consisting of Theus and John Holland, as well as the Dragados, was successful in its bid for the contract to construct the tunnel and station caverns. The construction contract for the surface and viaduct civils was given a joint venture between the Italian companies Impregillo and Cellini. The cable stayed bridge spanning 270 meters or 886 feet over Rinzer Road and Rouse Hill was a part of a $340 million contract for the project. The Northwest Rapid Transit joint venture, which consists of John Holland, Leighton Contractors, MTR Corporation, Planary Group, and UGL Rail, was awarded a third and major final contract called operations and train systems. The contract was to build stations and rail systems, provide single deck trains, operate the rail link, and maintain the system. The Kellyville and Rouse Hill stations are located above ground. However, the Talawang and Cherrybrook stations were constructed as stations in a cutting exposed to the sky but below ground level. Castle Hills, Hill Showground, and Northwest stations are also located underground, although Kellyville and Rouse Hill stations are above ground. The twin tunnels that run between Epping and Kellyville are Sydney's longest rail tunnels, measuring 9.6 miles in total length. They're also the deepest tunnels in Sydney, reaching a depth of 220 feet below the intersection of Pennant Hills Roads and Castle Hill Road. This makes them deeper than the floor of Sydney Harbour, which is approximately 164 feet below the ground, and significantly deeper than the deepest point of City Circle Tunnels at St. James, which is approximately 36 feet below ground. While most of the tunnels were excavated by boring, the portion that passed through Kellyville was built using cut and cover methods. As a part of the project, a new train siding was built at Rouse Hill near Talawang Road. The yard has enough space for 16 different train sets, and throughout the planned car parks at Cherrybrook Hills, Hill Showground, and Kellyville Stations, there were an additional 3,000 parking spots made available. To provide electricity to the metro trains, the whole route was electrified by overhead catenaries operating 1,500 volts DC. Standard overhead wires were utilized to give electricity to both viaduct and ground level segments that were located between Talawang and Bella Vista. Instead of using wires, an overhead rigid conductor system is used in the portion of the tunnel that lies underground between Bella Vista and Epping. Due to the higher current consumption of the new rolling stock, an extra copper cable was added to some of the portions of the line. The existing overhead wires were maintained for the remainder of the track, and in certain places an additional cable was installed. There are crossovers at many stops along the way, which allows the trains to terminate there rather than continuing on. They may be found in the areas of Talawang, Bella Vista, Castle Hill, and Chatswood, respectively. It was decided to preserve all the crossings at Lady Game Maintenance Facility and Macquarie Park, in addition to the link surfacing at Epping. In addition, the line was outfitted with the most up-to-date technologies, improving cellular and 4G signals. Passengers will notice that their 4G connections remain quite steady and very fast when they're traveling on this line. 
The line is outfitted with an Alstom or Ballas 400 moving block CBTC signaling system with ATC under ATO grade automation 4, and it possesses subsystems of automatic train protection, Iconis automatic train supervision, and smart lock computer based interlocking. Additionally, the line has an ATO grade automation 4 rating. This particular technology does not make use of any actual signals located on the railways. The only physical signals on the railway reflect the status of surrounding points by displaying either a white line pointing in the direction that the points are set, or a red horizontal line to indicate that the train should halt. Since the signals are basically just pointers, they can't figure out where the next train is and will keep showing a white line even when a train is coming from the opposite direction. Using a 5 GHz communication system, the approaching location and other information needed for the train to drive itself are sent right away to the train. Apart from that, each station on the Metro Northwest line has a platform screen door built in order to maximize passenger protection. Favely Transport was the company that provided the PSDs itself, while the Qingdao Jinjing Glass Company was the company that supplied glass that was used on the PSDs. Last but not least, the Sydney Metro Northwest is a forward-thinking and cutting-edge metro system that establishes a brand new standard for public transportation in Australia. Currently, Sydney Metro Trains, the operation and maintenance contractor for Northwest Transit, is in charge of operating the Metro Northwest until May of 2034. And that was all for today's video. We hope you guys have enjoyed the video, and feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section. Moreover, if you're new and haven't subscribed to the channel yet, remember to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you won't miss any useful and informative daily videos. Thank you for watching, and best of luck.